Gage mentioned that uh, I will give a, a short demonstration on how to use the genomic data. So specifically focusing on the usage of the variant annotation table and the hill matrix table. So uh, this demo will be very useful if you are only interested in some specific variants in the all data dataset, for example, by gene name or gene ensemble. Before the demo, I wanted to give a short uh, overview of the genomic data and the supporting materials in the research workbench. Can you see my screen for the presentation? Yep, we can. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So let me introduce myself very quickly. So my name is Jennifer Zen. I am a genomic support specialist in the Open Data and the Research Center. My background is in bioinformatics. I, my work mainly focuses on the research facing genomic data, uh, utilizing the tools in the research workbench and developing supporting materials for researchers. And uh, you may see some of the, the replies for genomic related questions uh, are given by me if you are using the Zendesk support tip, support tip to submit your for help. Okay, so before we get into the data and supporting materials, I'd like to show you the curation process of our genomic data. So there are many groups working in the of us uh, research program to make the genomic data available in the research workbench. We have the Mayo Clinic to store and uh, prepare the bio samples. And then the samples are sent to the genome centers. Uh, we have the Broad Institute, University of Washington, Baylor College of Medicine, and the Johns Hopkins to sequence and the genotype the bio samples. And then the data are sent to the data and the research center broad to extract the variants. Uh, then the variants are uh, to extract the variants and do some uh, quality control. And then the variants are stored uh, in the OPAS genomic variant store. So, but the researchers are not, we are not indirect uh, with the genomic variant store. We provide some common formats of genomic data in the research workbench, uh, together with some, with some uh, pre-installed tools uh, where uh, it is easier for you to do your genomic analysis. Uh, but in the future, we will consider make the genomic variant store public uh, for the researchers. So I, I just said the uh, sequence and the genotype uh, that is what the genome centers are doing. So which means that we provide two types of the genomic data uh, in the research workbench. Uh, that is the whole genome sequencing data and the microarray genome hacking data. Uh, we provide the common formats for these two data types. We have the brand common formats, the hail matrix table, and the plink files. So for the most recent release, we also provide the single sample chrome files for the whole genome sequencing data and the single sample IDAT files for the arrays. So besides all the common formats, we also have, we also provide some of the files for the whole genome sequencing data, uh, like the uh, variant annotation table, the genetic predictive ancestry and the relatedness. So the variant annotation table and the hair matrix table uh, will be the files we are using in this demo. And also feel free to let us know if you think other you need other auxiliary files and it is important for your research and we will bring this to the program to see if we can provide this for you um, in the future. And we also know it is important to provide uh, different uh, resources to support your research. Uh, we have the featured workspaces, uh, like the how to work with the of us genomic data using HAIL and PLINK, and also the integrated genomics uh, viewer 
to, be, uh, to browse the Chrome files in the research workbench. And we also have some uh, tutorials on the workflows uh, using DSA, Chrome Well, and NextFlow. Um, besides the featured workspaces cre created by the data in the research center, we also have some uh, demonstration projects uh, which are performed by uh, volunteers from uh, different research groups. Uh, they use the data and our data and the platform to perform their research and provide feedback to us to uh, improve our data and the supporting materials before we release the data to the research workbench. And one of the deliveries of the demonstration projects is to publish their uh, workspace into the research uh, workbench so, to, so that it will help uh, researchers that or do similar research or for using similar tools uh, will find useful uh, using their code or using their pipeline. And besides uh, supporting materials which workspace in the research workbench, we also have some supporting articles and frequently asked questions and the video tutorials in the user support hub uh, where you can search by keyword to find the uh, supporting materials that is needed for your research. And we also have the forum and Zendesk support where you can reach out to look for help. And we have the office hours hosted every other Friday and every other Tuesday. And a new user orientation every uh, once a month to help you uh, get started and facilitate the research. So no matter uh, uh, how familiar you are with our data in the platform, you can always find uh, different levels of supporting materials uh, from us. So, so that's one resource I wanted to point out and highlight. Uh, Gage and Amon also uh, mentioned previously, that is the data browser. So this is uh, public to anyone, even though you do not have a an account in the research workbench, you can still access the data browser. Uh, this is a very um, interactive tool for you to explore our, our data. And uh, it does not only have the genomic data, it has, actually has the overview for all the data types, like the EHR data, the survey data, and other, all other data types. So, and you may find the numbers on the left of the slide is deep, it's different from uh, what I showed previously in the slides. That is because we ground the numbers uh, into 20 uh, to comply with the data privacy rules. And also on the right, you can see that you can uh, search for gene, example, or variant ID, or by the genomic regions to uh, get a general idea of the variants you are interested in. Okay, so before we get into the demo, I wanted to, to talk about some clarification. So if you have already started working on the genomic data in the research workbench, you may know that uh, there are two different ways to get started with the genomic data. The first one is to start from the cohort and the data set builder, where you can build your own cohort of interest and then extract their uh, genomic data, that is the VCF files, using our genomic extraction tool. We have a, a support article uh, talking about this on how to use this tool and what is the cost of this tool and what is the restriction of this tool, probably. So I will send the link in the chat later. And, but in this demo, we will not touch this uh, area. Uh, we will start from the whole data set, uh, that is the heavy matrix table, and then subset it for downstream analysis. So, so, it will be a very, very short demo. So as I said, 
the, this demo mainly show you how to use uh, um, how to get the genomic data by a certain gene ensemble if you are only interested in some specific uh, variants like by gene ensemble. And the data we will use is the variant annotation table uh, and the hill matrix table. So in this demo, we will also practice some of the hill functions. So before, so every time when we start uh, writing our code, uh, so it would be better for us to write a pseudo code, to write a pseudo code uh, for our research. And this, that is being said to, to build a pipeline for our research. So it helps us to organize the code. And also, uh, if you put the code aside for some time and then you want to uh, update it or you want to modify it, uh, improve it, so it will be easier for you to do that. And also, uh, it we will prevent you from being lost in details. And so keep you on track for your ultimate goal to finish your research, to implement your research using the code. So for this small project, I divided into four steps. So, cause we know our goal is to uh, subset the whole helix table by gene name. So we wanted to know the data we use is the variant annotation table and the helix table. And we know that the helix table does not have the gene ensemble information. So we need that in the variant annotation annotation table. So the first one, the first step. Uh, is to is set up. For all your analysis, we recommend you to put this as your first step to get the path of your bucket, your Google bucket where you can save and load files for your research and analysis and also to import the package you need and and also to, so one more environment variable I would uh, recommend to uh, load here is the uh, workspace CDR that is associated with the workspace. Uh, for example, I am using the, so we won't see the steps. So for example, you will see that the, my workspace is, um, there is a version, it's version uh, data set five. If you use the environment variable workspace CDR, you will get, so you actually access the data set file, not data set six. So that's what I want to mention here in the setup uh, step. And the next step is to load uh, your data. And you can use for the helix table, you can use your environment variable. You can also use the uh, absolute path to the hill matrix table. And then we use the read matrix table function to load this uh, matrix table. And this is the same for the uh, variant annotation table. We specify the path to this variant annotation table and then use the uh, function import table to import this file as a hail table. So these two are different. When you use read and import, they are different. So read, you can only use read when this file is in the hail format table. So if it is a formal table, not in the hail format, you can only use import. So we can see that there are, it is a, a large file, like almost 60 gigabytes. So, and then it's fast to to load using hail, and you don't have to copy this file into your current environment. So you can see that there are like 102 fields in this variant annotation table. So I was, so you can also use this show function to take a look at the first several rows of this file. And so I will, point out some of the fields in this variant annotation table. 
and you see you have the chromosome, this variant, and the position, the reverse allele, the third allele, allele, and also any cells that starts with GBS uh, stores information about this uh, variant in the OS cohort. So, and we also have information about this variant in other cohort, uh, like the so like the genome. So any field starts with genome uh, stores the information about this variant in the genome 3.1 cohort. And so you can find more information about this about this variant and the patient table in our support article. You can just uh, search for the variant and the patient table as a keyword to find in the uh, user support hub to find this article. And also there is one field we are interested in is that is the major role for this uh, demo. It is called the gene zombo. Let me see if I can find. Yes, it is here. So this field, gene sample is the field we are interested in. So then we can filter, filter the variant annotation table by the gene sample we are interested in. For example, we use BRCA2 that is associated with the breast cancer. And so at, we use this function filter and we specify the fields and the value of this field we're interested in. And then we can use the count uh, to see after filtering, how many variants are there uh, in the filtered variant annotation table. And we can also see some of, uh, so this summarize is also a very good function to see uh, like the basic information of this field. Uh, for example, if we want to check if this filter function really works well, really filter only the uh, gene zombo with bracket to the, the value we are interested in. Here we uh, get a summarize of this field gene zombo, and then we see that so bracket two is the only value we have in this uh, field. And we we can also see the range. So most of the time, uh, one gene zombo um, locates within uh, one chromosome. I mentioned this because later on we will um, we will filter our matrix table, and there are some tricks to speed up your analysis. So when we find that the variants we are interested in locate in the same chromosome. And we will use some function to filter the matrix table, which is way faster than other functions. So we get a general information of the context of the variants we are interested in. We see that all the variants located in the chromosome 13. And also we get the range of the positions of all the variants, also using the summarize function. And then we can see the start position of all the variants and the stop position of all the variants. So now we, we can filter the matrix table. So the function here we use is filter intervals. So we now we know the chromosome, we know the start position and the stop position. So here we can make our intervals to exam. Well, we before we use the filter intervals to filter the matrix table. Uh, one thing I want to point out is that uh, the end position is like a, like a race in the or at least in the uh, pan, in Python pandas. So the last last number doesn't count. Or minus one. So when you make your own uh, interval, interval to exam, you will plus one uh, for this maximum position. So now we filter this, the, the whole data set, the whole matrix table uh, by the intervals we made 
So now we see there are like more than 20,000 variants uh, in the matrix table. So I forgot to mention one point while I was introducing the, uh, the genomic data browser is that uh, when you are interested in some variants and you search for it by its uh, like variant ID but with the chromosome position, reference allele or alternative allele, it does not show up in the data browser. It doesn't mean that this variant does not exist in our data set. So uh, there are only around 500 meaning variants in the variant annotation table or in the genomic data browser. Um, but there are more than 700 meaning variants in the hill matrix table. That is because uh, the tool we use to annotate the variants, it does not annotate all the variants. So it is common for any of the variant annotation tools. So uh, what I wanted to say is that if you can find the variant in the genomic data browser, please go to our here, the research workbench, uh, search this variant in our hill matrix table to see if it exists in the matrix table. Okay, so so which means that there are there are more variants in the matrix table even after filtering by this interval. Uh, we get from the uh, variant annotation table. So we then we wanted to get exactly the variants in the variant annotation table. And to get rid of the, uh, the variants does not exist in the variant annotation table, but exists in the matrix table. Now we need to use a different trick. We still use the field intervals, but we but the interval is not like a region of this uh, of genomic region, but it will be like the the intervals in a like bed file. You have the chromosome, so each input is a is a site. It has so the start and stop it will be the same for each variant. We use this function locus interval to to make all the variants uh, in the variant annotation table and to an uh, interval list. So we'll see uh, what is the final result for the interval list. And then we annotate this uh, field into the uh, variant annotation table. So it will be in the end of the table. We see that um, it's not It's not easy to see, but so basically the this the type the data type of this field interval it is locus because we use locus interval to make this field and it will be the like chromosome and column and then start and dash and chromosome and uh, column and then stop position. Sorry for the it's causing you. So now we get this interval list, exactly interval list for the variants we are interested in. Then we can filter the uh, filter matrix table by the interval list, exact interval list. So this is a little different from pro previous because we did not, we still use the filter intervals, but we did not use this Plus lowest interval because it's it's more expensive to use this uh, function because we do we don't have to use this function because all the uh, the intervals in our list are just one position it's not a region so it is faster just to use this function so after filtering we see that there is only really more than seventeen thousand variants in this. Uh, in the final uh, filtered matrix table. So this is the final genomic data set we need. So now you can do your uh, downstream analysis.
So one thing I wanted to remind you that we did not split multi-allele variants uh, in our data set. Uh, most of the research, you may want to split your uh, split the multi-allele variants uh, for your downstream analysis. So this is the function we use to split multi-allele variants. So you will see that after splitting, uh, we have more than six, uh, 19 thousand variants in the data set. So I think that is the, uh, the short demo for this project. It shows how to uh, subset the whole matrix table uh, by the gene zone you are interested in. And there's one note uh, I wanted to mention that if you can use, um, so use filter intervals uh, as much as you can, because so sometimes you can also use filter rows or semi joint rows uh, for the specific steps. They are uh, they are the they are of the same uh, speed, but for the downstream analysis, filter intervals will be faster than filter rows. So. And let me go back to if I to see if I have anything in my slides. Yeah, I think that is just a summary. We showed you how to get the genomic data by a second gene ensemble and the data we use. In it. We give an example of the usage of the variant annotation table and the human matrix table. So basically, we need to know uh, where to find the data you need. So if you know that. Uh, you are interested in the um, uh, the information of the variants in not just in the of us data set, but in other in genome data. You may know that this information is stored in the variant annotation table, and we we'll also practice some health functions like how to read matrix table and info table and filter table and uh, other health functions. So. I still have four minutes left for questions. Um, let me see. Thank you for that demo, Jennifer. That was awesome. Thank you.